Hey folks, it's Ardwolf. Welcome. This is more Battle for Normandy. So I'm going to try and shake things up a little bit here. We are actually on the Ju end of the June 6th night turn. I'm about to start uh, the AM uh, turn. Um, and I said I wasn't going to do a video for a return, but s enough interesting things happened here that I, I felt like back in that, uh, off on that statement. So we'll see, we'll see where we go. Um, so the Allies are... Uh, limited to half movement rate during the night turn. The Germans are not, but there is also no mechanized movement for either side in the night turn. So the Allies are kind of getting in position here with the 4th Infantry. Uh, the 90th Infantry has actually started landing, and the 90th, infantry, 90th is going to head south um, whilst the remnant of the 101st. Uh, this is, by the way, all that remains of the 101st, which has uh, now, if you watched the last episode, ejected the Germans from Carentan. Uh, German, the former defenders of Carentan, now much reduced, have backed off behind uh, the Tout. Tauta? I don't know, River. Um, and uh, they're going to stay there for the time being. Uh, the Allies would really like to secure this road, but they really lack the forces to do it in any meaningful way right now. Uh, we've got some reinforcements coming up from the South, 77th Infantry from the Germans and 17th SS. Uh, 17th S the 77th Infantry is actually going to be heading up to... I don't have to make the decision right now, but they might head up to Carentan, which I think is where they're going to go. Uh, there's also some elements of the 30th Infantry Division that have come up from the south to back up the 91st and the 243rd. And their core HQ is back here. I'm having to uh, kind of be careful with supply. The Germans now have, I think, three core HQs on the map. Um, the Allies uh, had fairly massive air interdiction down in map E. Um, what was that D? No, it was map E. Uh, some minor air interdiction on A and D. Um, so they did cost the Germans some time. Uh, right now, 17th SS is heading through St. Lo, and uh, 265th Infantry is heading uh, north uh, towards the general vicinity of Carentan or East or we'll see what happens. German defenders over here um, opposite uh, Omaha have pulled back to whatever extent they could behind the river. This, ant uh, this flak unit out here has kind of been left out in the cold. Um, probably we'll get to move him back somewhere but we'll see this is farmland it is two movement points per hex uh, we actually uh, can remove the uh, out of supply marker off of this ranger unit we consolidate that into another battalion and uh, use it hopefully to uh, reduce this strong point rangers will get a plus uh, one against i think i'm misremembering that no i believe that's the case actually uh, so there's still a couple strong points here on the allied side i could use that extra d uh, drm uh, down here, uh, some British commandos have made a run for Bayou, but the Germans also made a run for Bayou. These these guys are all out of supply. The, uh, what is it, the 716th or the 709th, one of these. Let's see here. Damn it. Ah, there it is, the 716th. Their headquarters was actually eliminated down in, uh, in a small semi-pocket down in front of Gold Beach. Um, so it will come back, and actually at that point they'll probably be back in, what's left of them will be back in supply. Um, so the uh, the Germans down here are pulling back behind the river, defending what they can. Khan is now pretty much fully invested by uh, the 17th SS and parts of 21st Panzer and the 346th and 711th Infantry Divisions. The rest of 21st Panzer is up here, um, facing off against the eastern... Um, Orne River Bridgehead that was originally held by the British 6th Airborne. Um, the actual hex is no longer held by the British 6th Airborne, but by the 3rd UK Infantry Division and elements of the 27th Armored Brigade. So 6th Airborne did actually hold out um, long enough. Uh, there are still pretty relentless attacks. They did take some losses there. Um, but 21st Panzer, I think, might have as well. They poured absolutely everything that 21st Panzer could muster from down here, got poured into that attack, except for the one that I needed to, to uh, suppress this hex uh, for mandatory attacks. And uh, they just couldn't do it. This guy's probably out of supply. I should have checked that. Uh, let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll pull him back one hex. I can make these adjustments. So, so uh, some observations here. Let me give you the other highlight, and then I'll make observations. Um, this is all that's left of the 101st Airborne. Um, 82nd is in a little better shape. 
uh, but not much. And the 507th and one of the glider regiments is kind of trapped, uh, almost surrounded here by elements of uh, 91st Luftlande and the 243rd Infantry. Um, they faced some major attacks. Um, they got a company eliminated, um, but importantly, and they've already been forced out of Pont Le Bay, but importantly, this unit holding out in the village of Picoville um, actually held out against the best that the 91st Infantry could muster against them. Um, that said, of these units, this guy is the only guy who can even retreat at this point because the rest of them are locked in by Zox. Um, I'm pretty pleased with the way I'm playing the Germans, at least over here. Um, but then again, over here, I got a little more to work with. Um, the 709th up here in the Cotentin has uh, kind of pulled back, uh, lest they get flanked up here. Um, which they didn't want to do they had to put some guys up here so uh, so that uh, avenue is now cut off so the fourth is prob are probably going to come in and try and surround in here and take out these guns uh, we did get a couple of pot shots over the last couple of turns at uh, allied ships but we have not scored any hits on that and i did move a couple allied ships and amazingly now that i'm actually rolling physical dice the um um, I have not sunk any additional ships. So uh, additional observations here. I did discover another minor quibble, which I will show you over here. And this is actually a, like an actual mechanical quibble that I have. It's probably the first one I've really had, uh, as opposed to uh, issues I've had with implementation of certain rules, just questions that I felt like the rules were not crystal clear on. And that is with isolated units. Um, so technically, by the reading of the rule, um, we have uh, a strong point somewhere over here, right? No, actually, I think it got eliminated. Well, we had a strong point up here. And as long as it could trace a supply path to another strong point, it was not considered isolated. It cannot be eliminated unless it is isolated. It does not matter by the writing, reading of the rule um, whether that is that other strong point is also isolated or not. Um, so I think that's probably a, a, a more of a fact issue. I think the spirit of the rule is that if the strong, the strong point is isolated, if it can't trace a supply path, um, another uh, strong point would be sufficient as long as that strong point is in supply. That's gonna be how I'm going to play it. Um, I think it's vague. Now, the other, the other actual mechanical quibble that I have, and really, like I said, this is the first one that I found, is that we've got a bunch of units out here who, who cannot trace a supply path of any length. Uh, we've got units from 716th. We've got more units from 716th. Uh, these guys are all hosed. But they, there's no attrition mechanism to, uh, to cause them to surrender or anything like that. Uh, these guys at this point are miles behind uh, enemy lines. And these, uh, these are, if I'm not mistaken, one or one and a quarter mile hexes. I'm pretty sure they're one mile hexes but they might be one and a quarter. I'd have to check. Um, it's something like that. But these guys are way behind enemy lines at this point. They're surrounded by British and Canadians. There ought to, I think, in a game of this complexity level, be something about, hey, they lose a step or something like that. And if there is, I haven't found it so far. I'm going to keep looking for that, actually, because it, it, it makes so much sense to me that that would be in there. Um, so maybe that's not a real mistake. If you are aware of such a rule, please mention it in the comments. Um, the other thing, and I've been posting stuff, as I mentioned in either the last episode or the episode before, um, I've actually been posting screenshots as I go on Twitter. Um, so if you want to follow me over on Twitter, that's fine. But the, the point of, of saying that again is actually uh, not that, hey, I have a Twitter feed and I'm awesome, but that this game promotes really, really strong narrative. And it also promotes really tough decision making. So for example, over here with the 82nd, um, this unit cannot retreat because you flatly cannot move from Zok to Zok. This stack here, there's two reduced units there. They can't retreat for the same reason. This unit can. So during the Allied movement phase, for example, he could... Now there's a, a hold the line mechanism, which I believe I misstated in a previous episode. Um, but barring that, uh, this guy will have to pay one half to take the road and then an extra two for two and a half um, to exit the Zok. But you still can't go from Zok enemy Zok to Zok, and it doesn't matter if they're the same unit or different units or whatever, as far as I could tell. Um, and then he could back up all the way up here, and that's that's fine. But w what I'm saying is that the game is forcing me to either abandon these two stacks, so that's, uh, that's five steps, I believe. Uh, that's six steps, actually. I'm either going to have to abandon these guys and sacrifice them and hope they do well fighting it out isolated here, um, or I'm going to have to fight this out 
Um, and I think that's a really cool thing about this game. The game has cornered me into making that decision. I don't really have the ability to uh, to do anything else. I've either got to got to rush guys in here and fight this out because uh, I can't I can't back up um, this unit back here. Which, as the German player, I totally intentionally moved this here. This puts Zox here, here, and here. So these guys absolutely cannot move. This guy can, but if I pull him back, then I'm, I'm sacrificing these guys, and I'm not really sure I want to do that. I haven't made up my mind as to how I'm going to handle that uh, so far. So, um, since we did a night turn video, uh, I might do uh, a video at the end of the AM turn. We'll see what happens. The, the AM and PM turns are obviously quite a bit more eventful. The Allies have a giant pile of stuff on most beaches to land. You can see what we have here in Utah and over here at uh, Omaha, this this whole line is... Uh, you're technically, you only put the three stacks in the landing queues until the mulberry, mulberries are built, which will be a few days yet. Uh, but I'm just setting them up and lining them up. And as long as I remember what uh, what comes in on what turn, because they do have to enter in that order. Uh, guys lined up uh, behind the boats in uh, Gold and Juno. And... Um, these guys come in on Juno, 51st Cub, British comes in on Juno. I'll have to double check that, I think, because I don't trust myself on it, but I'm pretty sure that's accurate. And that actually moves up. And the only beach with, which has a pretty clear queue is Sword. Now, there is a um, an optional rule. This is the last thing I'm going to mention before I try to cut this short. Um, that says that uh, after the landing turns, I believe, you can um, start sending U.S. units to whatever U.S. beach and Commonwealth units to whatever Commonwealth beach. I'm going to actually, I think, play that, but I think I'm going to interpret it uh, as you can reroute stuff from other beaches to that country's mulberry. Um, so the, the American mulberry is being built off of Omaha as it was historically uh, until it sank. And the British uh, mulberry is actually being built off of Juno because when I had to make that call, that seemed like the better move. Now, that could be long term a mistake because it's harder to get to the sort of road hub that is Bayou um, from Juno, but I will live with that. Um, it does look like the Germans are going to hold on to Khan for a while. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, we really just need to get more and more um, guys off of boats and flowing down here and attempt to surround it. Um, we'll see. The Germans do have uh, a bit, little bit more from 12th SS, but they have the Panzer Lair Division coming up. And that is probably going to take up a position in here. Uh, I'm not sure they can get quite this far, but they should certainly get this far in a turn or two. So they will probably be able to prevent the surrounding of Khan. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but that is the June 6th night turn summary. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Um, I'm certainly not done yet. I will point out, and I, I was trying to cut this short, but uh, the Allies have enough victory points at this point to claim a sudden death victory on June 9th. Um, so unless they lose those victory points, and I'll show you where they're at, they are the two hexes of Carantan worth four apiece and the one hex of St. Mary Glees worth one. Um, it doesn't seem particularly likely that in another day that is going to change. I, I would not say it's impossible, uh, but I am what I'm disinclined to do is uh, dramatically alter what the Germans are trying to do to uh, to meet an artificial point goal, which means an all-out attack on Carantan uh, at pretty much outrageously disadvantageous uh, rules. What I'm inclined to do is probably do what the playbook says, which is to treat sudden death as an optional rule and, and, and wrap this game up whenever I feel like wrapping it up rather than, uh, than sticking with that. So uh, I think we're calling set a sudden death an option unless something really dramatic happens here, um, like a massive allied blowout, which probably is unlikely. So anyway, that was the June 6th night turn. Thanks for sticking with me on this. Um, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in more content like this. Um, I do want to get back into the rhythm of actually doing videos. Um, this is kind of part of that, and I'm finding this format to be really agreeable in terms of I don't have to redo stuff because it's not absolutely perfect. Also, follow the Twitter feed if you are so inclined, and there is a War Games community on Google Plus if you are interested in that. So check that out if you want. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.